because uh, I, I reckon if I am God's ambassador, I could either make God to be a liar or a truth teller. So I think he's a truth teller because he can't lie. So uh, God spoke to me directly, said to me, you will go do that service and you will call it on now. So I dove on that radio. I told that man, can I use your radio, please, please? God's in here, and he's, you know, and he was already bawling. He couldn't drive. You know. So I just took the radio. Uh, Ms. Hogan was listening, thank you, God, on our base station. And, uh, and I said, Ms. Hogan, this is a red alert. Uh, that boy was right. The Holy Ghost had slapped me upside the wall in this truck. And I was wrong, and he was right, and I want you to call as many people as you can get your hands on. I'll be back at this certain time. And I expect to see every elder in this work standing at attention in my front yard. And, of course, she's the warrior she is. She had them all standing there on time. And everybody, I changed, I think it was 14 missionaries' schedules and 167 preachers' schedules. See how powerful your word is whenever you say it? That's why you can't just say things sometimes. Because your influence has power. And you have to know that you're moving in the voice of God or else you're going to be made a laughing stock. And so, but since God is not a liar, I was quite confident. I got in over there, hadn't talked to these men. They, were, they had all come in from all over the work. We had, I don't remember how many truckloads was there, seven or eight, nine truckloads of pastors and wives and elders. And, oh boy, it was really one of the wildest things you've ever seen. But I've got to tell you that even though I heard from God, he heard from God, God had spoken to him. And, I mean, his whole, I, mean, I would have crucified him had he been wrong. And I mean it, and I would have. And, and, Now, I done got all these hundreds of folks lined up going to church, and I don't even know what's going to happen when we get there, if anything. So I'm riding down the road, I'm begging God, God, you've got to give us some kind of a miracle sign. I, I, look, God, I know that I've got to have faith and trust, and I do that, but I want you to intervene supernaturally because you never have not before. You always have moved us with miracles. And I intend to see one now. You just take your time and do it ever how you want to. But I need you to prove to me and all this leadership that we're not running and chasing after some emotional sign. That we're being led by the great Holy Ghost. And that it is your divine will to interrupt us to bring us your power. Nothing happened. Got all these people to church because you see what y'all don't understand is uh, it's not even in this culture very deep. But where I work, respect and honor, faithfulness and uh, between men and the, the, our word to each other has the highest caliber of rating and that you'll die if you break your word to people. You understand? So, but also... I can you can say whatever you want to about this, but it's not my fault. I didn't set up the rules. I just participate. Uh, the, the problem about me going to a village, even though God gracefully let me go and open the work, start the church, I was there when the, when the pastor got born again. He's one of my sons in the faith. But I do not have the right to just show up. Isn't that something? Because the only reason I do that anymore is whenever there's fixing to be Holy Ghost fire on the judgment level. And every man in our work fears that visitation. It's a healthy respect we have for one another. And it keeps us walking straight. <laughs> I won't talk to you about that very much because y'all don't have any idea what I'm talking about. Because in this country, all honor and respect is gone. There's no such thing. So when you get it back, we'll talk. But where I live, we still have that high caliber of respect and honor. 
and our word is valuable. And so it's not legal, it's not possible for me to show up at a service and just enjoy the service. I cannot do that. There, there wouldn't be such a thing. There would not be a service. There, it would be chaotic. It would be a mess. And as you'll see in a minute, it got there. All of a sudden, I come driving into this village with seven or eight, nine, ten, these big fancy four-wheel drives, and each truck costs more than the whole village did. You understand? It's amazing, which includes the schools. <laughs> and so we're, we come whipping up there, and all these elders and pastors and, and important people in our work start unloading and and the, uh, the, the pastor comes up, I mean, walks straight up to me. You know what? It, instead of, hello, how are you doing? I'm glad to see you. You know, what his, you know what he told me? What are you doing here? And I didn't have an answer. There's no answer to that question. Uh, God told me to come. Oh, yeah? What did he tell us he's coming? Because what y'all don't understand is my our work... Uh, uh, this, this is another time and another story I'll need to tell you about. Uh, we, went, we had to go underground because I was a wanted man for a number of years because of preaching the gospel and people getting saved and healed. And, and so there was a high, high reward out for my head on the pole. And so we, we, I couldn't tell anyone about services. God had to do my scheduling for me. And there was three years of not one missed service where I would go to church and the, everybody would be there waiting worshiping God I would preach and leave in the night they never knew where I went or where I came from but I'd get to the next place and they'd be waiting so I have to tell you that my lifestyle is a little bit different than yours and I don't have a few privileges that you do that you take for granted it's directly because of the power of the Holy Ghost it is in control and I will leave it there. It took several years for it to get in control and I'm going to leave it where it is, in control. And so this great Holy Ghost, I didn't have an answer for this guy. I, I just said, God told me to come. Well, he got very angry with me and stormed off. That never happens in Indian culture. To their, to their worst enemies, they're kind to the face before they slip the knife to the back. And so he was, this was really out of hand. And I was sitting there, I said, oh, God, oh, God. I told all, that, all the elders with me, I said, listen, guys, you guys got to go and explain to this individual that I'm not here for any, any, any uh, evil or disruption or justice from God. God didn't speak to me to come here for destruction. He spoke to me to come here for peace. And they went, but of, to, of no avail, he wouldn't listen. And so I'm sitting there, boy, things are tense. You cannot believe how tense. It was just way out of hand, okay? And so this, uh, we're sitting there, and this guy says uh, to me, he said, well, Brother David, don't you come eat? I said, no, man, look. I said, there's a hundred and some odd people with me, almost 200. And, and then you time you feed all the people from the village here that's in our church, you know, there, there's just, I know you was not prepared. Because, you see, the worst thing you can do is shame these people. You cannot disgrace them in any way. They will not get over it.